Here are the 19 free agents. We'll run through them very quickly for the Cowboys. Dalton Schultz, Anthony Barr, T.Y. Hilton, Jason Peters, Brett Maher, Tony Pollard, Anthony Brown, Jonathan Hankins, uh, Matt Overton, the long snapper, uh, Cooper Rush, Carlos Watkins, Connor McGovern, Luke Gifford, Donovan Wilson, Leighton Van Der Esch, C.J. Goodwin, Noah Brown, and Dante Fowler Jr. So I liked this article that Todd Archer wrote for ESPN that typically when we ask these questions about Cowboys free agents, we kind of say, all right, who should you keep? Who should you cut? Uh, you know, uh, this projecting, this guy will be back. This guy will get franchised, do things like that. Archer took it a different direction. And so he's looking at the 19 unrestricted free agents and he's saying, this is where the Cowboys should be willing to retain all 19 essentially. So just trying to say budgeting, not yeah, Not as easy as just saying buy Cooper rush, but saying buy to Cooper rush. If it gets past this point. So he's broken them down into tiers, and of the 19 free agents, he has two players that he says you should stretch the budget to keep. Okay. Like, hey, if you've got to make some tough decisions to make this per- make sure this person's back, do it. The first one, safety Donovan Wilson. The Cowboys' base defense essentially features three safeties. Wilson led the Cowboys in tackles and had the most sacks, five. By a defensive back in the NFL in 2022, he was a tone setter on defense that led the league in takeaways uh, each of the past two seasons. He's the type of player the Cowboys want. Drafted in the sixth round, developed into a starter. Now it's time to sign him to a second contract. I absolutely agree. I would do, I mean, within how reason, is he, obviously. How, how is he defending the pass? So he's he's better if things are in front of him. Like he can make plays on the ball if things are in front of him. If you're asking him to play center field, he's not very good. But that's not that's not his role. He's a, he's a thumper. He's a downhill player. Mm-hmm. Look, I love Donovan Wilson. I have to double check his age. Um, I believe he is twenty seven next year. But I feel like him and Curse, him, Curse, and Micah, and I don't even know if there's a third. Like represent twenty six. Represent. He's almost twenty six. They represent the attitude on the defense. Like I love Donovan Wilson's nastiness. I feel like he's a true safety. He but, just turned twenty eight. Is what it is actually, Chop. Donovan Wilson? Yeah. Spotrack says he's 25 in uh, 352 days. Uh, Cowboys says right here, 28. I'm believing Spotrack over the Cowboys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, 28. It's a safety, though. And he's a, he's a. Now, the question with him has always been he's broken down at times. He's gotten hurt a lot. Uh, but in general, I think, especially, I, Sean, if you want to move on from Malik Hooker and save that three and a half million, and yeah. then Israel McQuamu might be playing some corner next year instead of safety. Yep. Yeah. That's that's tough to do basically a full reset other than curse. Okay, I'm, I had much more excitement in my voice one minute ago when I thought we were talking 26 versus 28. Uh, but, okay, we can we can stretch it a little bit. Surprising name here, I think. The other, the, the second name in his stretch the budget to keep, Leighton Vander Esch. Oh, man. Leighton man. Vander Esch played really well and stayed healthy for the most part. But, I mean, you had that question again at the end of the season. It was another neck thing. And does anybody, is anybody going to pay him what it would then lead to you having to stretch the budget to keep? I do agree that until they have better linebackers in place, they probably need to bring Leighton Van Der Esch back. But what does stretching the budget mean? Yeah, what does stretching the budget mean? I will say this. When he got hurt, there was a panic felt around here that I never could have foreseen. Uh, We were terrified of going up against Philadelphia with all their zigging and zagging and misreading and putting Micah in the turnstile or whatever they call it. Um, we freaked out when Leighton Vanderish got hurt. So I'm not stretching too much, but it felt safer and more stable when he was on the I, field. I hope he's back. Uh, Sarah got a jersey last year. Here's a TJ Maxx for like 12 bucks, and she <laughs> wants to be able to wear it again <laughs> next year if she can. She wanted to get a new one. So I hope, I hope he's back. Next section is don't overpay. So these are guys that if it's reasonable, do it, but do not overpay these guys. Okay. If it makes sense, do it. Wide receiver Noah Brown. No doubt, man, Michael Irvin. The curse of Michael Irvin on Noah Brown. When Mike came on here and was mad that they were throwing that very important uh, play that ended up in the... Jacksonville. Jacksonville. He said, why are we throwing to Noah Brown? I'm like, why are you you criticizing Noah Brown? He was Cooper Rush's favorite, uh, but then Noah Brown from that point on felt like it was was downhill 
with the way he ended the season. So, of course, do not overpay Noah Brown. No, I just would move on from Noah Brown. Like there reaches a point even where you're if you're in a block, even even if you're a decent <laughs> player, which Mo, Noah Brown is, he's decent. Even if you're a decent player, I think there reaches a point where it's like, find let's it. just refresh here because the dudes, this is he's already been brought back on a third contract. This would be contract four. Yep. Like it, that's enough. Defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. Six sacks and 343 snaps. Not bad. That's some nice flashes. Nice flashes. If he wants to come back on a, you know, yeah, I'll come back one year, two million. Sure. It's good. I yeah. can I can live with that. Yeah. Uh, definitely don't overpay. He he produced a little bit more than I thought he would. Uh, but yeah, you can't overpay. And then the final name in his don't overpay. Cornerback CJ Goodwin, the Cowboys best special teamer. 33. Seems to be year to year at this point for CJ Goodwin. I I think Nashawn Wright can do what CJ Goodwin does. I know CJ Goodwin's been a special teams ace, but Nashawn Wright gets a lot of credit for the team from doing that. He's younger, get him some reps. I, I would just move on from CJ Goodwin. Yeah, bye. Yep. Bye. Sure. 33. Sure he's not 31 according to the Cowboys. Uh yeah. yeah. How how are the ages that that's pretty different? Uh Spotrax had some old info on there before. Okay. Uh take a chance. So these are more go ahead and gamble on these guys. Three of them. Running back Tony Pollard. The franchise tag looms for Pollard. That would make sense for the Cowboys if they don't have a long-term deal in place by March 7th when the franchise tag window closes. But signing Pollard to a multi-year deal would make even more sense, RJ Choppy. Wow. Who said this, Archer? Yeah. This is Archer, right, which, out, hey, out, hey, no, no, you're not out on Archer. If Archer's saying that, that may mean you're out on the Cowboys front office because Archer is Archer's a very well-informed reporter. Uh, yeah, but you know what he needs to do? He has an obligation to speak it into existence what he really wants to happen there. <laughs> and that is for him not to be signed. If they sign... I, I, Look, I, there's two options on the table. You can tag him for one year or you can let him go. The, the uh, Anything past one year with a multi-year deal is not an option. Should not be an option. I have two options on the table as well. Unless you're getting two years at less than the $10 million total it would cost, which is never going to happen. I have two options on the table here. Okay. For option one, draft one in the sixth. Option two, draft one in the seventh. Those are my two <laughs> options on the table. I'll he's, agree with you. He's about to win you back. His second player. Take a chance Are you going to disagree with Archer on this? Um, I, I, I've i said I don't mind the franchise tag for him. I would not sign him to a long-term deal. No. 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 Anthony Brown. Oh, a choppy special. Cowboys huh? never really replaced him after the torn left Achilles in early December. Signing back on a one-year deal makes the most sense for both sides. I mean, look, you can get uh, you can get Brown and Lewis. Like, who, who are you going to replace? Let's say it's six million bucks. Now, obviously, the uh, the Achilles is a major sticking point for me because yep. he's now he's getting a little bit older and he's coming off a major injury. Uh, so, if you want to move on from him, I'm okay with that. But assuming he was healthy and he was going to get six million bucks a year, who are you going to find that's better than him for six million dollars? I am fine. Bringing him back on a one-year deal, if it's not the type of one-year deal, that means, well, he's our automatic starter. If you're going to sign him to one of those, and then you're going to keep guys behind him as a progress stopper, no. If he wants to come back on a one-year deal and he's a contributor, fine. But otherwise, no. Uh, the third name, defensive tackle, Jonathan Hankins. I thought the run defense looked a whole lot better with him in there. Yes. He's an older player who some people thought was on the downside of his career. So 31 in March. He would be taking a chance on the Cowboys in that sense. Cowboys would be taking a chance in terms of we're going to stick with a veteran instead of letting some of these younger players go. Pay market price. Four names for you here. And I'm just going to list them down. You guys tell me which one you want to talk about. But this is let the market set the value and then you pay it. Cooper Rush. Carlos Watkins. Connor McGovern. And linebacker Luke Gifford. Special teams ace. What's uh, the market price for Cooper Rush? It's, what it, it, it according according to analysts, according to many people here, he's going to get paid big time money. I'm going to go get those receipts too. Without without looking, I would bet if he's going to be a backup with a chance to start or something like that. I think Cooper Rush, just without research and heavily, I it strikes me six to seven million. I mean, that that's what like guys like... Six to seven? I thought people were talking much higher than I that. I mean, if you're going to give him a chance to start, maybe. Yeah. But I, I, I think six to seven million, would you pay that? I'd rather pay Tony Pollard 10 <laughs> than a backup quarterback six to seven million. Cooper Rush, no. Carlos Watkins, no. Connor McGovern. I'm in on McGovern. Fine. Luke Gifford, no. Those are my answers for that. Go ahead, explain McGovern. 
Uh, McGovern, and your just, rush answer as well. I just think McGovern is is solid. He's he's not great, and that's kind of what Archer says here. He said he's solid, nothing spectacular. Is nothing spectacular, but he's solid, which is okay. You you don't need spectacular as long as Biotish continues to improve. Martin plays like Zach Martin. The tackles are improving. You can have a guy who's just solid. You don't need to have Pro Bowlers at every spot. So I'm fine paying Connor McGovern saying let's keep the continuity. Uh, and and then, Rush, I you, would not pay Cooper Rush. No, no. no, I would not. I would not pay anything more than a minimum type of contract. Uh, and then really quickly, the next Mike White. He's got the either ors. We won't spend time on these really. Matt Overton, Jake McQuay, the two long snappers, Jason Peters and T.Y. Hilton. Take them or leave them, basically. And then the move on names, he's got three. Linebacker Anthony Barr, who he says did a fine job after signing training camp, but they drafted Damone Clark. His eye on the future, it's his time now. Tight end Dalton Schultz, who's going to be out of their price range. Played on the tag last year. And then finally, kicker Brett Maher, who they <laughs> seem to kind of just kick him out the door after the season anyway. Yeah. And uh, they just signed Tristan Vizcaino. Well, yesterday to, I believe, a futures deal. So they're already working on kicker. We've been a little cold-blooded towards Maher. Yes, he was great last year. He was year. tremendous. He had, he had a bad day. Yeah, I think that I think that's stupid. Like, we haven't talked about that enough. Yeah. And Jerry said, period, point blank, with reporters, we're moving on. Not, we'll see. We're moving on. Yeah. Done. Done.